Hello everyone. In this video, we are exploring a delicate and controversial topic, the LGBTQIA+, which symbolizes pride for some, but causes dismay for others. Protests occur in several cities worldwide, causing confrontations between supporters and opponents. While we strive to be inclusive and accepting, some take the debate to an excessive level and harm the cause. We will analyze and dissect the LGBTQ phenomenon to try to understand it better, highlighting what is acceptable and what is not. But let's start from the beginning. The term and acronym have evolved over time, appearing in the 1960s with only the concept gay, before the term lesbian was added, finally forming LGBT in 1990 by including bisexual and transgender. In the early 2000s, the Q for queer or questioning was added, and more recently, the I and the A for intersex and asexual. What does all this mean? The following percentages are for the population of the United States. L for lesbian, women attracted to women, represents between 1% and 1.5% of the population. G for gay, men attracted to men, represents between 1.5% and 2% of the population. B for bisexual, people attracted to both sexes, represents approximately 2% of the population. So, lesbians, gays, and bisexuals collectively represent around 4.5% of the population. T, for transgender, individuals whose gender identity does not match their biological sex, represents 0.6% of the population. Q, queer for people questioning their gender identity and sexual orientation. I, for intersex, individuals born with biological characteristics that do not match either male or female, represents 1.7% of the population. It is therefore important to note that 1.7% of children are born with a congenital anomaly that prevents them from being clearly identified as male or female. They are real victims of nature. In addition to all this, we must add the gender's identities. It's a psychological, cultural, and social concepts. So here is a list of some of them. Cisgender, transgender, non-binary, gender fluid, agender, bigender, demiboy, demigirl, genderqueer, two-spirit, androgynous, polygender, genderflux, neutroys, autogender, intergender, and so on. Behind all these genders simply hides a trend of identity typical of teenagers in search of identity and attention. All these genders follow the hippies, punk, grunge, emo and gothic, to today towards non-binary and agender identities. While for the majority, it may just a simple teenage phase, it's essential to remain attentive. For some, it could indeed mask deeper psychological or psychiatric issues. And this without getting into the complexity of pronouns, which surround the phenomenon. Let's be honest, it can be quite excessive. It's not surprising that it can be confusing. It is evident that many people often confuse the concepts of sex and genders. Sex refers to the biological categories, being male, man and female, woman. Gender, on the other hand, is more about identity and social roles. It's a social and personal construct that reflects the feelings, impressions, and preferences of an individual at a given moment. Let's get back to the facts. Man is an animal, a mammal of the family of great primates. Biologically, there are only two sexes, male XY with testicles and penis equals man and female XX with vagina, ovaries, and uterus equals women. The differences don't just stop at genital organs. There are differences in brain size and brain connections, hormones, bone density, hairiness, size and shape of the larynx, and voice. Men weigh on average 23% more than women. When comparing a woman and a man side by side, they resemble each other, but everything is different. Women have a delicacy, with soft facial features, while men are robust, with a build and more marked facial features. This covers the biological aspect. Now let's discuss the cerebral and psychological aspect. Without going into details here, men and women have different behaviors in terms of aggression, empathy, emotional expression, and fields of interest. The major difference is, of course, sexual attraction. Normally, Men are programmed to be attracted to women, and vice versa. It's natural. 
The primary purpose of a sexual relationship is procreation, crucial for the survival of the species. In homosexual individuals, there seems to be a programming anomaly in the brain. The causes of homosexuality are not clear, a combination of genetic, psychosocial, and environmental factors might be the cause. Socially, the acceptability of homosexuality has greatly improved over the last decades. However, the LGBTQ movement is expanding. Pro-LGBTQ activists are surreptitiously infiltrating political systems, establishing a propaganda system to promote all forms of homosexuality and genders. In many educational systems, LGBTQ plus themes are introduced to promote inclusion, diversity, and respect for all sexual orientations and gender identities, often through educational programs and anti-discrimination policies. The initial goal was to promote inclusivity and acceptance of homosexual individuals and those with gender differences. However, it has deviated, turning into promotion and recruitment, making it seem normal, cool, and trendy. It is unacceptable that this is being done directly in schools, to young children. Children's prefrontal cortex, responsible for decision-making, impulse control, and reasoning, continues to develop throughout childhood and adolescence, making children easily influenced. It is exploitation of their naivete, to make them question their sexual orientation. I have seen school publications on the subject, discussing homosexuality and explicit sexual practices, aimed at eight-year-old children. Brochures, books, and transgender speakers are invited to educate and promote these themes. And it has an impact. In the United States, about 6% of the population identifies as LGBTQ, and this percentage climbs to between 16% and 20% for Generation Z, born between 1997 and 2002, compared to about 1.5% in the 1980s 90s. In addition to homosexuality, the transgender phenomenon is also promoted. It is suggested to children that they might be in the wrong body, which can be rectified with medical and surgical treatments. It's abominable. These decisions are made by school officials, without sufficient consideration of parents. In fact, if the parents do not agree with the school's staff and refuse to allow their child to undergo the changes, this can lead to legal conflicts and child protection interventions. I do not understand the politicians who allow this, it's a lack of logic and judgment on their part. This is not about acceptance and inclusion. It's about influencing the minds of children to confuse them and lead them to make tragic and irreversible decisions. 40% of people transitioning have suicidal thoughts. It is normal that some children do not identify with the traditional behaviors associated with their sex. In the past, they were simply called tomboys or sissies. They should be allowed to adjust their behavior and activities according to their profiles and interests. The idea of giving them puberty inhibitors or hormones is simply catastrophic and ridiculous, causing severe and irreversible physical and emotional damage, it is not a solution. The only appropriate cases for such treatments would be the 1.7% who are born intersex with congenital problems. Others must live with their bodies and their ideas, without undergoing inhumane treatments. Let's specify that there are two types of transgender individuals, the radicals who undergo physical transformations through hormones and multiple surgeries, and those who simply choose by identifying with gender as such. But in reality, we do not become a woman simply by perceiving ourselves as such, and at vice versa, it's illusory. Now, let's talk about all the perversions resulting from this phenomenon. Boys are now allowed to enroll in girls' sports activities. They are even allowed to share the girls' locker rooms. They have nothing to prove. They just have to say that, emotionally, they feel like a girl. There are people who allow this. How is this possible? How can it be permitted? Who authorizes this? In order to build a harmonious society and coexist peacefully, it is necessary for everyone to adhere to certain dress codes and appearance norms, particularly in public roles. At home, everyone is free to make their own sartorial choices, it is their own business. However, when holding a public position, maintaining an appearance that meets societal expectations is important. I am referring here to a recent situation in my community where a man, a primary school principal dressed in women's clothing. This deeply disturbed me. 
even more ridiculous, and believe it or not, this is also allowed. Tom, 43 years old, decides to put on makeup and wear a short skirt and it's all set. He can now go into public restrooms reserved for women. We can all agree that this man is probably just a pervert or seriously disturbed. Just a quick word also on TV series. They are also part of this in terms of representation. Have you noticed that as time goes on, TV series present more and more homosexual characters? I am not homophobic, but I must admit feeling a bit uncomfortable seeing two bearded men passionately kissing for 45 seconds. And now we are not only talking about Pride Day, it has become a whole month. They have parades in the streets. Despite of everything, overall and overtime, I think the situation has evolved. I believe that people, in general, behave normally, politely and respectfully in the presence of gay individuals. No one should be ashamed of being gay or different. But why some extreme activists need to endlessly shout it from the rooftops excessively? It's like they are always seeking attention. They organize demonstrations in the streets all over the planet. Some exclaim, we are coming for your children. What is this threat? This does not help the cause. It seems like something out of a horror movie about pedophilia. From the LGBTQ perspective, all of this represents progress and evolution. But in reality, it's quite the opposite. It's a slide into absurdity. The pride flag has become more of a symbol of belonging to a cult group, a defender not only of gender rights but also of all the causes of the extreme left. In conclusion, many adjustments are needed. Firstly, it's imperative to remove these ideologies from schools. Leave our children alone. Any gender transition interventions in children must be halted, and puberty inhibitors and hormones must be made illegal. All gender transition surgeries, utterly abominable butchery, must be prohibited, except for those who genuinely need them, like intersex people, born with a genetic problem. Men must be excluded from women's sports and from girls' bathrooms and lockers. The madness of pronouns and genders needs to stop. Unfortunately, I don't think we can rely on the Biden administration for this. A significant change is necessary. I believe that, in general, everyone with common sense whether heterosexual or homosexual, understands and agrees with all this. The problem comes from a very small, marginal, and extreme minority who seek to create discord. No one wants confrontation, but if we let them continue, it seriously degenerates. We, too, will have to take to the streets and protest to make politicians see reason. Regardless of our sexual orientation, our preferences, our style, and our personality, in the end, we all want the same thing. A society that evolves in the right direction, to live normally and in harmony with one another. If you liked this video please give it a thumbs up. Watch my introduction video by clicking on the video on the left. Otherwise I suggest you watch the next video by clicking in the one on the right. And subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you for watching.